So in this screencast, we're going to learn about the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is sort of a combination of laws that you might have heard of before, like Charles's law and Boyle's law and Avogadro's law. And those are all very specific for certain combinations. And I'm not even going to talk about those because we're going to derive the ideal gas law from first principles and never once talking about Boyle's law or Charles's law because, well, honestly, we just don't need it. So there are four measurable properties of gas, meaning there are four things when we're talking about a sample of gas that are measurable, quantitative measures. Those are pressure, volume, number of moles, and the temperature, PV, N, and T, known sometimes as the big four. So the first question we want to do is we're going to try to figure out the mathematical relationship between these four measured properties of a gas, the big four. So the first thing we want to do is just sort of like analyze them in pieces and parts. So the first question we want to ask is how are pressure and temperature related? So if we have a sample of gas and the volume and the number of moles remains constant, the question is, is what happens when we adjust one of those two things, pressure and temperature? So here I have my little sample of gas and I've got my four little gas molecules bouncing around. And Remember that pressure is a measure, if you will, of the number of collisions per unit time into the wall. It's a, it's a simple way of thinking about pressure. So the more collisions we have per unit time, the greater the gas pressure is. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the temperature and sort of see what happens. Well, if we increase the temperature, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy or um, sort of velocity of the gas molecules. So we make the molecules move faster. So if we make the molecules move faster, they'll traverse the volume of the container twice as fast, and so they'll bang into the sides of the wall twice as much if we double their speed. If we double their speed, the number of collisions per unit time doubles, and so the pressure doubles. So put mathematically, this means that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So what that alpha means is directly proportional. Okay, so pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Next. Here is a sample of gas, again our, our sample of gas, and now what we want to do is we want to look at the relationship between the pressure and the number of moles. So in this case we're going to keep the volume of our container constant and we're going to keep our temperature constant, so again the velocity of those individual molecules bouncing around is going to be constant. So if we double the concentration or double the number of moles of gas, they're all moving at the same speed as before, but now we have twice as many molecules banging around and of course it's not too much of a stretch to realize that the pressure then doubles because I have twice as many collisions per unit time because I have twice as many molecules. So put mathematically, pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles. Thirdly, pressure and volume. Now we have a sample of gas and we're going to keep the number of moles constant and the temperature constant. But what we're going to do is we're going to sort of analyze pressure in relationship to volume so when I double the volume, what happens to the number of collisions? So I have my four molecules, and now I double the volume. And now, because I have twice as much volume for the molecules to traverse, it takes a little bit longer for each molecule to sort of bang into the side, and so our pressure actually decreases. So if we double our volume, the pressure actually goes down by a factor of two. So if we combine that mathematically, we get that the pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So if we increase the volume, the pressure actually goes down. So now we have the relationship that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Pressure is also directly proportional to the number of moles. And pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So if we combine those, two, those three relationships, we get that pressure is directly proportional to the ratio of N times T divided by V. So since it's proportional, we can actually come up with an equation and actually come up with a proportionality constant, and this is the way that it's traditionally written. So PV is equal to nRT, where R is our constant of proportionality. And the great thing about this is, is that now we can look at the relationship between any two of the big four. So like Charles's law and Boyle's law relate only two different of two different elements of the big four. And so now we can have all of the four and we can come up with any sort of relationship. So we can see that the relationship 
that um, volume is directly proportional to temperature. We can see that temperature and number of moles are inversely proportional. We can even do so many things as to change two of the big four and see what effects it has on one of the other ones. Or we can think, change all three of the four and see how the fourth changes, none of which there are laws for. So the ideal gas law is much more powerful than Charles's law or Boyle's law because they're sort of subsets of this ideal gas law. So again, R is the gas constant, and it's a, it's a known value. Um, just for completeness, I can tell you that if you take one mole of an ideal gas at a pressure of one bar and a temperature of 273.15 Kelvin, the volume of that gas, ideal gas, will be 22.7 liters. And so what this gives us is the ideal gas law, the gas constant is 08314 in units of liter bar per Kelvin mole. And there are lots of values of R. If you look in your textbook, you'll find liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole, maybe milliliter atmospheres per Kelvin mole, or milliliters bar per Kelvin mole. And they're all, they'll all have different numerical values, but their units will all be different. And so there's lots of different values of R we can use. Depends on the situation as to which one we want to use.